they're going to be working. Say that one more time. They're going to be. They're going to be what now? Okay, I'm sorry. I don't know what happened to it. Um, so they're going to be focusing on five countries and how to do business um, with other countries in the world. And then also being able to probably create something that they can use. Country. So, um, but one that we are focused on right now is breaking the cycle of incarceration um, by focusing on entrepreneurship and being inventors. So our organization, we work with the juvenile facilities teaching those young people entrepreneurship and the ability to be an inventor. So if they have an invention, we take them idea to patent. So we have people with patents right now. Mm -hmm. and we have some that are in the mark, the manufacturing stage. Um, there are also some that are doing their first prototypes. We wanted to make sure that um, when they leave and they're released, that they're meeting opportunity and resources rather than the thing that got them incarcerated in the first place. Let's um, crawl back, let's crawl back low. Cause, uh, cause like we had a, a slight disconnect. Uh, uh, I wanna make sure that I heard you correctly as well as our listener and viewing audience. Cause you, you mentioned about uh, the cycle of incarceration. Then you said something about making sure that they had some type of patent or business when they got out. I, I must've missed something somewhere, I'm sorry. So our focus on breaking the cycle of incarceration because a lot of them, they can't go get um, certain jobs. They can't go get certain housing. And so what we do is we, we kind of in our system set them up to repeat the cycle again. And so our goal is to help those that need entrepreneurship because they're very intelligent. I talk to a lot of them every single day. So they're very intelligent, but they don't have the opportunities or the resources to put the, that intelligence into action. So our goal is to meet them before they get out, creating okay. possibilities for entrepreneurs. Now with that entrepreneurship, this is for the youth. I wanna make sure I heard you correctly. No, so we do ages 16 to 24. So that is considered a youth. So we are now focused on prison also. We are, uh, we just um, presented to the jail. We also do the juvenile facilities in Jacksonville also. You know what, I, I, we got to link up with you. I'm also the CEO of the First Coast Leadership Foundation and what you're talking about makes so much sense uh, because if we can break this cycle, uh, for those of you that may know my story, uh, my biological father spent most of my youth in prison. So. Uh, uh, according to statistics, obviously, if your father was in prison, you typically repeat the same cycle. So I get it. I get it. And we have to break those, what we call in, in, in the uh, church, those generational curses, you know, and, uh, mm -hmm. but, but I do believe that our youth can only perform to the level that they've been prepared. So what you're doing, Dr. Carter, I sincerely commend, and I would love for our nonprofit to, to sync up and collaborate uh with it um now can you please call out your website your social media address when does this kick off how can they sign up i need all of your information <laughs> okay so we've been we've been doing this for about four years now but they can go to crumpinforsuccess.org they also can reach out to <laughs> they don't know how to spell crumpin let they don't know how to spell crumpin <laughs> yes let crumpin. me tell for you <laughs> It's www.krumpin, the number four, success, which is S-U-C-C-E-S-S -S dot org. They can go to our website. They can also reach us on all social media platforms, whether it's Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook. Um, I'm on TikTok. <laughs> so they can reach out to us on any social media. They also can, as I said, come to Charles Booby Clark Community Center. That's off of Sutel and Sabal. We manage that community center. Uh, we have some, and it's not just for teens to come there. During summer camp, it is, but any other time, people in the community that need assistance with, if they want to start a business, if they want to use our equipment, if they want to start a t-shirt business, guess what? They can come to our center, use our equipment. 
and be able to start businesses. I want to make sure that we're reaching people and giving them the opportunities that they otherwise would not see. Um, and that is our goal. Yes, uh, uh, Dr. Carter, uh, I'm going to have to bring you back in because you're, you're right in my alley. Um, uh, uh, with the nonprofit that we run, we, we fed thousands of families, thousands of families, and we partnered uh, to help feed those families. And uh, uh, someone knocked on the door and said, how come we're not feeding people? And my response was because we're focusing on employing people. And if we can help people get work, they can buy their own food. And our objective is to go from giving that fish to teaching how to fish. And so that way, instead of uh, depending on the nonprofit, you can actually support the nonprofit and, and, and to where it's a reciprocal relationship and, uh, and it's empowering. And, and I love uh, your, your narrative because uh, you talked about five countries. We are a port city. Um, I had an opportunity to sit down with Mr. Uh, Brian Williams, who's over uh, set asides uh, with Jack's Port. So we, we, we need to be able to sit down with uh, uh, Aisha Eccleson and, and, and say, how can we move some stuff to, to Shanghai? How can we move product to Nigeria? Or how can we move these T-shirts? And, 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 and anyways, I, I love it. I love it. I love it. Call out your website one more time. And then we're going to go over to Ms. Vanessa to, figure, to find out what's going on you know, around the city with her beach and bougie self. So our mm -hmm. website is www.krumpin, the number four, S-U-C-C-E-S-S -S dot org. And we are at 8793 Sabal Road. You can come there between 10 and 6 every single day. Definitely come after next week. We're redoing the entire center and it's every room is focused on a different city in the United States. So we have the Hollywood room, the Vegas room, the New York design and fashion room. So you'll be able to come and kind of see the things that we wanted to bring into the community. Let them I'm coming next week. I'm coming next yeah, week. You can come play Pac-Man arcade game with me. <laughs> I'm coming next week. I'm bringing some of my uh, 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 non-alcoholic water with me too from Kemper Vita uh, Alkaline. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm gonna bring my water uh, from the uh, Kemper, and we're gonna uh, we're gonna we're gonna play arcade games. And uh, I probably uh, still have some of her water in the kitchen too, because I. You know, about that? you know about that? You know about that Kemper water? I'm messing with you, uh, Miss Vanessa. What's going on around the city? Talk to us. First of all, once again, excellent conversation. I mean, couldn't have been better paired. We had Matt Carlucci talking about his plans for the city. We had this beautiful woman here discussing what she's been doing in our city on the nonprofit arm. Obviously, you're there to just make the mix. I love it. Um, so to his point, the Southeast Development Group has been talking about the riverfront, you know, Jags, we all just saw they had a press conference about what they want to do on the riverfront. So the river is the hot topic for this week in the city. And my suggestion is on June 8th, um, they're having another discussion about what people want to see on our riverfront. Do you want to see parks? Um, I went with my kids. I'll probably be out there on June 8th at the Ritz Museum. And you kind of get a, a chance to hear from the community what they think. The last one was at a church out east that I attended, and it was really interesting. So please uh, just let that be in your mind. What do you want to see? It's going to be billions and billions of dollars spent at Jacksonville. What do you want uh, the heart of our city to look like for the for eternity? <laughs> yes, and uh, I, and now uh, one of the things I do want to do is uh, put a plug out for the Florida Star newspaper. Uh, if you have a business, a product, a service, an event, um, something that you want to promote or make the community aware of, thefloridastar.com, thefloridastar.com, over 30,000 subscribers. You can, you can take an ad out and print digital. I mean, we have a social media presence as well. Uh, do business with one of the oldest Black-owned newspapers in the South. Uh, and I want to close with this one thought uh, because... Um, uh, people talk about social justice and they, they didn't quite get it. So what I had to do, Dr. Carter, is I said, what is social status? 
And they said, well, social status is like based on how much money you make. You know, you got the poor and you got the middle class and you got the upper class. I said, and that is your social status, right? Yes. And then I said, well, what is injustice? Well, injustice is something that was supposed to be fixed, but wasn't either by the government or someone that was in charge. I said, perfect. So what is social justice? Social justice is helping people who had never gotten the opportunity to reach their opportunities because people in charge didn't give it to them and they never got it right. And this is their opportunity to get it right. As I always say, knowledge is power. Knowledge of self is powerful and knowledge of God is a source of all power. Thank you so much for listening to the Impact Radio Show. This is your host, Michelle Nix. I love you. God bless you. And good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you so much, Dr. <laughs> Carter. Thank you so much, Vanessa. Thank you so much, Ms. Carter. Right. I love y'all. God bless you. And good night. Good night. Good night.